Hey everybody, this is Alreza from Zafre and today we're gonna be building some animations in Webflow using Clipfast. This is gonna be the final uh, finished project and as you can see, if the user uh, tries to hover over any of our objects here, it's gonna trigger an animation. But uh, we have to first reload the page. Uh, so here's the first state that they're in and as soon as the user's mouse hovers over them, we're gonna change to another state, and we even have a have them transition into it so they don't immediately change. So now we're gonna head over to Webflow and start our work. We have flex and we have some box elements inside of them that all have different colors, and uh, we're gonna be changing these elements uh, by giving them a first state that they're in and then animating them to another state. In order to do this, we're gonna be using the clip clip path bay. Uh, extension slash apps in Buffalo. You can search it like this and install it for yourself. Once you have installed it, it's going to give you this launch option which lets you launch the app and start using its features. Then we're going to scroll down and find the uh, state that we want basically from this list. So for this one, we can, for example, use message, cross, plus, and all these other states. Or you know, this binds one, which is going to make our elements look like this. So if we apply that, for example, to our element that we had previously selected, it's gonna change it from a normal red box to the, you know, the current state that it's in. And in order to check that if it's being applied or not, you know, just other than just by checking them visually, you can go to the settings tab for the element that the style is being applied to, and you can see in the custom attribute section we have a style equals clip path being applied to it. We're just gonna change how the box element is gonna look. Now in order to actually animate this and make it so that it's gonna change as the user hovers on it and it performs an action to it, we're gonna be using an embed. Then we need to uh, create an animation here basically. In order to do that, I'm just gonna copy and paste some uh, the basic structure of a CSS animation and then we're gonna give it a name. Since our box is red here, we're just gonna give it a name of red. This is gonna be our animation's name. And it's going to need the, uh, an initial state, which is going to be the 0% one. And it's going to need a 100% state, which is going to be when the animation is finished and how it should be after the user has clicked on or hovered over our elements. In order to get the, those two, state that, two states that we want, uh, we're going to find the first one by going to, into the binds one, which we used earlier. And we're just going to be copying this value that the app gives us on the bottom side. And we're also gonna want to find the you know secondary state, the final one, which is what our app is gonna look like once it's uh, the user has hovered over it or clicked on it. So we're gonna copy those two and paste them right here. That's gonna be the initial state, which is what is currently on. And this is gonna be the final state, which is what's gonna happen after the user interacts with it. And we have to remember what the name is because we are gonna be using it here. Once we have the box selected, we're gonna go on to the hover state, or we can also work with focus or press, but just in this example, we're gonna be using the hover state. And we're gonna scroll all the way down to look at the custom properties section, we're gonna add. Then we're gonna be adding an animation and we're gonna be giving it some values. First, we need to give the actual name of the animation, which we previously discussed is gonna be red. And then we're not gonna tell it how long the animation lasts, which is gonna be 500 milliseconds or half a second. Then we're gonna give it the, ease, the timing function, which is gonna be ease, and we're gonna tell it how it should act after it's done doing the animation. Uh, and we should also you know, get the, the spelling for it right. It's gonna be four words. Now, if we do this all correctly, we can see that it does actually change when we hover over it. Now we're gonna remove that and we're gonna hover our mouse, and we can see that it is working. And what's happening here, that you know, uh, jitter effect that's being caused here is because uh, as, it's, as our mouse is hovering over it, it's gonna change how it looks. So because of that, our mouse may be on a part that, you know, uh, the final set isn't gonna have that, you know, it's gonna be the empty part, basically. It's gonna be black. Now we're gonna do the same thing for our blue box here. We're gonna add an embed and you know the basic structure of an animation. This time it's gonna be called blue. Of course you can call it whatever you want for your own project, but in this case we're just gonna call them red blue just to keep them simple. We're gonna find an initial state, which is gonna be this one right here. 
and uh, click it so it's actually applied to the element. And we're also going to copy this uh, value that the uh, app gives us that we can use right here. So now we can see that it's actually being applied and it has changed. And we can copy the initial value. And remember, you have to remember what the initial value is and you have to declare it in the 0% section. Otherwise, it's just not going to work here. Now we go to hover, we do the same thing. This time we have to, you know, find animation again. This time it's going to be called blue instead of red. We have to enter the other values just to keep things consistent here. We're going to be using the same function and time for this one. And of course, we're going to keep it as four words as well. If you don't want it to stay how it is in the final set, you can just remove the four words and it's going to go back to how it was previously. Uh, we can do the same thing for the purple and yellow ones as well. As you can see, it is being applied to those as well. So there we have it. Now it's being applied to all four of our elements. Here's this one, blue, and final red. Now, for one solution that's very simple and effective that we can use to get rid of this problem where it's kind of just jittering all over the place. We can, instead of using hover, we can use another state for it. For example, we can use pressed or focus. Also, uh, one thing to note here is that uh, this uh, style that's being applied here, this clip path, uh, these are, there's a meaning behind them and you can manually change this, change this if you want. And one other thing to note here is that uh, the values used here need to match not match, but they need to um, have the same amount of properties as the next one. So for example, on the top one, if you have you know, 12 values being applied here, you need to have 12 ones being applied on the bottom one as well. Or if it's 15, it needs to be 15 for the other one as well. These are basically coordinates, they're points on the screen that are gonna be used to you know, tell our app uh, where uh, our box element is going to be able to be visible and where it's not going to be visible. And those uh, little circles, right, those blue circles are those you know, coordinates that are going to be used by the app in order to tell it like, hey, for example, this zero zero here is ref referencing this uh, blue circle on the top left. And it's going to be on the x-axis, for, uh, for example, it's going to be, you know, 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100%. And then for the Y, it's gonna be the same thing. It's gonna be going uh, from top left to all the way to bottom. So it's gonna go from top, it's gonna be zero for Y, and the bottom is gonna be harder. It's gonna be on the left side, zero for X side, and uh, on the right side, it's gonna be 100% for the X axis. Now in order to actually uh, fix this problem, we're going to be using another state instead of hover. For example, pressed can be used here as well. But we do have to use the you know, same animation custom property for it to work. So now if you come over here and... Sorry, let me just remove that. Now we come over and click on it, it's going to change and it's no longer going to be an issue. And it's going to actually stay as it was before because uh, the way hover works in Buffalo is that you know, once the user is no longer hovering on it, it's just going to forget that custom property in general. So it doesn't even matter if you have four words for it, if you are using the hover because it's just not going to count anymore. Basically, it's not going to read that.